Hi everybody, um, today I want to talk a little bit about how to get um, information from the Stochastic Momentum Index. Um, it's one of my favorite indicators, um, primarily because it studies the highs and the lows. Um, so it kind of takes a difference between the high and the low and takes um, some measurements over that over a given period. So when you have the Stochastic Momentum Index, you can specify um, a bunch of different settings. Here's the settings that I'm using uh, on mine. Uh, but in general, it has an overbought and oversold region um, as well. And you can have it show the zones um, for that. And then also kind of a signal line uh, on top of this. So on my main charts, I use a MACD, a volume oscillator, Elder Force Index, and Statistic Momentum Index, um, and then a Money Flow. So these are the main ones that I use. Um, I really like the stochastic because it can give you an idea for the peaks. Um, so you, typically when you have a chart, um, you look a lot at the higher highs or lower highs um, or lower lows or higher lows. Um, so you can compare these peaks to kind of get um, channels um, and then drawing those can help you understand what the trading might be like. So for example here, um, we can see there's kind of a channel there. Uh, and it's kind of widening actually. So you see that um, with this one here, um, this one didn't quite make it there, but um, we might bring this up a little bit here and bring it down there, but then it kind of skips this range. And here it says that this was oversold. Um, so um, if you don't believe that, that was oversold because basically it made a new low there, then you can kind of redraw that. So, um, but going back to Scastic, um, there's a bunch of different things I want to cover here. I'm going to look at trends, uh, momentum, uh, reversals, divergence, uh, breakouts, uh, different cycles. I'm going to talk about support and resistance uh, using this stochastic um, and then just different patterns and channels and pivot points. Um, so these are all different topics. So in general, um, the trend for the stochastic, um, there's two ways, two primary ways to tell what the trend is. So here you can say the trend is going in a positive direction, but it's still negative. Um, here, because it's cross zero, you can say the trend is a positive direction um, and it's positive. And then this is very positive direction um, and even to the point of a possible reversal. So this would be overbought here and this would be oversold. So um, the safe regions you can say um, are you know, when you're buying in the trend is, you know, to, it just really depends on where you want to, what kind of trader you are, if you like reversals, or if you like buying with the trend and momentum and so on. Um, so let's first start about off just generally discussing how Stochastic works um, and looking at this chart. So we can see that this is generally an uptrend. Um, and then in general, you can see it's an uptrend, it's above zero here. Um, and then you can see kind of a downtrend here with maybe a slight uptrend in the middle. And here you can see it's below zero. This is the zero line right here. So let me just draw this in yellow so you can see the zero line being yellow. So there you can see that um, a little more clearly. Um, so I have a 15 minute chart up here. Um, you can pretty much draw any kind of chart you want. I like to use stochastic um, actually on some lower time frames as well, um, even down to the minute chart, um, just because it gives me a pretty precise entry and exit sometimes um, with the uh, signal line. So in general, that's how you tell uh, if it's going to be, you know, that's what the trend is. So, um, you know, you can kind of look at micro trends, mini trends in here. So you can say, you know, this doesn't really look like much of a trend here, um, but it actually is a kind of a trend um, here. Now, the one fault with the stochastic momentum index, and actually it's also a blessing sometimes, um, is that if you don't have volume, is that stochastic momentum index is primarily just a price action. So it really only tells you just price. Um, so even though there was a downtrend here, um, you can see that this downtrend was even more because it got um, more of a base here on this level. So um, it doesn't really include the volume. Um, so I do like using um, some volume indicators as well. Um, I have another video on uh, force index, elder force index, and you can maybe review that one if you'd like um, to see how um, an indicator uses both price and volume. But, um, but it's still a great indicator. So why would someone want to use... Um, one uh, indicator that only does 
uh, price. Well, one of the reasons for that is that, um, you know, actually price is all that really matters in the end. If you're going to make money, um, better be based on price. Um, it's not necessarily going to be based on volume. Um, and the other reason is that if you're trading uh, certain securities that change time frames, um, so for example, futures, so if I change this to the MES, um, we'll have current live data coming in here now. So basically, um, you can see that the volume here um, is high during the day here um, and low during the night time here. So the stochastic momentum index doesn't really um, evaluate that. It just primarily focuses on the price. So certain other indicators that you use will completely flatten out. Um, and it doesn't flatten out. It's relative. It's still relative to the price here. So. Um, it's still a very valid indicator um, because it's using just the price and you can compare it um, precisely um, at nighttime and daytime. So that's one really big advantage of using the stochastic momentum index. So let me just make sure I got this clear for you um, that there's basically at least three ways to measure momentum or the trend, right? So one way is to create like a channel, right? And you can create a channel here on the top side and that's maybe not a very good channel there. So we have a channel that's kind of weird here. So we have a converging channel on both sides um, with it ending on a positive note here. So um, that this, this is basically a downtrend here and this is basically an uptrend here. So we have two different debating um, trends and it's probably a little bit more biased on the positive side. So you can see that of these two trends, um, by drawing these two lines, I can say that pretty definitively that we're going to end on a positive note here um, sometime uh, on the first. So that still hasn't happened yet. So you can see we're in the nighttime data here. Um, and we don't know that for certain, but that's one way to kind of measure it. So it's a little bit harder to measure further out with this unless you do daily time frames, right? So you can kind of take these off to the daily time frames. Um, and then start to get a little bit more. Now, this is another example. So on the MES, you don't really have um, the, uh, the volume data. So I use this spy here and I'll use this, not that the volume matters, but the price goes back further and you can see a little bit more detail. So I'll take out these channels. Um, and now we don't really have a channel that we can write, but we can see, uh, we can start to see uh, some more details about what's going on, right? So we can see that there's a couple lower points down here and higher points. Up. So you have to use this really carefully, I would say, in general, um, if you're going to start doing reversals and divergences. Um, and you have to care about every last detail. Now, one of the problems is that the stochastic momentum index, when it's calculated, is calculated based on the highs and the lows. So you have to be very precise about measuring these highs and the lows um, when you're using it. So for example, here, we have a slight downtrend there, right? And then here, we have a slight uptrend on those. And you can see this is definitely an uptrend here. So, um, but on the peaks, which is the most recent data, so we take this data out here and here for now, and we study just what's happening recently between peak to peak, we can see that this peak is actually a divergence now because what's happening is the price is going up, but this peak did not quite reach that peak in terms of the, the actual price movement. So it just measures the price action between eight units. So what I did is I can, if I specify this at 16, for instance, um, it will widen out the chart a little bit here, right? So it's still pretty much the same because it is, if you notice here, it's exponential um, movements on this. So um, it widens it out just a little bit. So it really doesn't matter too much uh, using eight or 16, but you can see, um, I just like eight because it's a little bit quicker. Um, and I know that eight units is about a week and plus a day. So a couple days. So, um, but you can see here that this one even here had a higher high. So all these are very touchy on the points here. And you can see that the entry and exits are also very subtle here. So you can see this is an entry for a sell position and then a buy position right in here. So, and it's pretty much right on the same um, movement. So when the price does fluctuate, um, you have to watch it very carefully um, if you're going to move on a decision. So 
Um, so in general, the trend here is positive. Um, and we because it's above the zero line um, and then you also have the signal line here um, the red line that is positive so um, this is uh, basically a moving average so you can see um, that uh, it is quite positive and it's even due for a reversal now the significance of that reversal um, it basically depends on how high it is um, so uh, we have breakouts uh, that I want to discuss next. Um, so one word to the wise is that um, although I did say you could short from this point, um, you got to be careful because, for example, there's a crossover here, um, and that wasn't quite wise at all. So um, one point is that when it gets closer down to zero, then it is the momentum is on the price is a little bit more certain on the downward trend. So, for example, you could just wait. I mean, it's, it, the price did actually go up technically um, until about here. So you can see um, it swung over and then it kind of even went up as part of this down uh, upward trend. So, um, but it's basically measuring how far those drops are. So let's talk about uh, breakouts and cycles. So one cycle and breakout that you see in this range is that this is all going up, right? Um, let me change this to I can actually so you can see so in general um, the price is going up and it only dips down to just slightly below zero so that's considered a major breakout region um, so that's basically what happens on a breakout you go up um, and then you drop maybe a tiny bit and then you go back up again and then you just keep going up again so you have breakouts in the positive direction you have breakouts in the negative direction so here's some negative breakouts so you have some ones that just kept dropping um, and then you can see here that they didn't quite make it back up again uh, to the positive side so they just kept going negative they went a little bit positive and then back negative again so the next topic I'm going to talk about is support and resistance um, it's a little bit difficult uh, to talk about support and resistance um, using a stochastic momentum index because it moves so fast sometimes um, and basically what I do to do that is I still graph the tops here and I can kind of graph the tops here so you have to do that uh, and then you can tell that basically the level of that this is actually dropping here now it does have different sections in here and you kind of have to go by section um, and even many subsections or even kind of do it in here so um, and you can see that we're basically entering a, a an era here where it's kind of dropping um, and we might see new lows and and, and lower and lower highs so that's pretty much how you do support and resistance so the top line would be a level of resistance and the bottom line is a level of support um, so the supports are actually getting to be lower and lower and it kind of creates a channel here um, and you can also graph it um, mid sections in here um, do horizontal lines um, so I could draw one in here and one in here and these are kind of many levels of support and resistance on the price um, and you can see that once it gets back into these levels you can start to see some more bounces uh, kind of in the midpoints uh, in here so we do we should expect it to come back here and maybe bounce off of that back up again so this would be a level of support and then maybe a level of resistance if it um, drops below that so um, it just doesn't like that so um, and that's basically support and resistance so channels are hard to find uh, on this you have to kind of use these inner channels and then outer channels so the peaks um, and stuff like that so so when you're drawing lines on the graphs here it's sometimes easier to use um, the red line or the signal line here um, and then draw the the lines from there so you can kind of get um, these uh, levels of support and resistance a little bit better um, and so on but now it, what I saw here is a convergence so I'm actually on a five minute time frame right now so you can see um, that we kind of oscillated a lot um, kind of in the same level here um, for most of the day and then we can see that we're kind of even oscillating down to a lower level here on the price so that um, is at least what this this shows here and it agrees with the price action for the day so you can see 
we're down uh, 0.72%, and then this also shows a uh, trend towards negative. So at first, when you use the minute chart, um, stochastic might look really uh, complicated. You pretty much gotta zoom in because when you're trading on a minute chart, you're gonna wanna look at the details anyway. So you'll probably zoom in and then you'll be able to see some of these uh, convergences and divergences. So um, you can see here, you kind of have a upward trend on that, um, right? And then here we probably also have an upward trend as well. So even though this is a downward trend, um, you can say that there's still an upward trend um, based on these these two here. So that would mean that we see maybe a short term uh, upward uh, trend here. Now, in terms of entries and exits, I would be really careful um, when using it. Um, you know, there's basically two general theories. One is to use it when the signal line crosses. The other is to wait until the momentum of the entire um, trend gets to be negative. So, and you still have a crossover. So, basically, you have this one here where it would say you should short at this point. And you don't lose that much more. You just short at during this period. And then you unshort the position when it becomes oversold. So, at some point in here, um, when you start getting convergence between these two lines, you can start to un, you know, buy back the position. And so uh, that's pretty much how you can trade it. So if you have any questions about how the stochastic momentum index works, or you'd like to look at more details with me sometime uh, in person, that'd be great. Um, just send me a text message down below. Um, we can talk about it in detail. Um, and uh, But yeah, so basically this is the minute chart. Um, you can look at how it looks on a five minute chart. Um, so you can start to see different types of convergence and divergences, different types of you know levels that uh, may be considered support or resistance. So um, on a five minute chart, and then you can see here's a 15 minute chart, right? So this is showing that it's pretty much staying within this range. <coughs> so this, this lower range would be the level of support and this would be the level of resistance up here. Um, and you can see that it's pretty much uh, kind of converging into some point here, or maybe a little bit positive. So um, that looks, but that's based on this here. So um, this one here, if we bring this out further, it may take us longer to converge on that point, and it might not be very positive. So um, because these were way out here, um, when we draw this line here, let me see if I can draw this line. So this line brings us way out there. So this one, uh, depending on how this one rides here, that actually hits on a negative uh, so point. So basically, you know, it's it's a kind of a debate um, what we might see tomorrow, right? So depending on how we look at these, um, you know, it, it looks like the lower lows are taking priority here and then that. Um, but then these two here were looking pretty good, so um, relative to the high here, so it's still a debate. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this presentation of how the stochastic momentum index works. Um, it's basically a lot of great uh, details and data about the highs and the lows, um, and you do have to kind of chart it out um, if you want to see the details on it. Um, please like and subscribe. Let me know if you got any questions. I'd be glad to talk to you about it further. Thanks.